So we right. are a culture that is predicated on a virgin birth. Right, we have this idea that a woman can be a Madonna or you can be a whore. So whether or not you are a vessel for a male god to come into this world or you're a vessel for a man to have pleasure, either way you're a vessel. You are a sex object, not a sex agent. The opal, at least in this context, is a representation of the way women's bodies are a source of healing, almost like an emotional sham wow. Because what happens is they almost, I think, Beauty is weaponized against women and is used as a means of increasing self-hatred, keeping women in this spiral of hope and despair, teaching them that they don't have value because if a person believes they don't have value, they're far easier to control. Mm -hmm. So beauty is a weapon within this patriarchal system. Mm -hmm. So like I say, I do see it as a, victor, uh, as a victory, yes, but not as a, a black woman, but just because there are Meghan Markles all over the world of all colors, of all shapes and all sizes, because we don't just use colorism against women, we use size against women, we use age against women. People oh were God. obsessed with her edges and it was at yes. that point that I realized I realized that to many black people, black mm -hmm. edges matter more than black excellence. And I was like, oh. this is really, this is really a problem. One of the reasons why we're having such a deep and broad and international at this point discussion is because the line is so blurred. It's very easy with the Miley Cyrus. It's very easy to say that's clearly a cultural appropriation. Iggy Azalea. With, um, with Bruno Mars, the line is a lot more blurred, so we have to have a far more nuanced discussion. So I think there's a value in that. Um, and I've been thinking a lot about this as a hobbyist, as a dancer. Yes. And... Um, you guys all know I grew up in ballet and I was, you know, the only, to this day, there are not a lot of black women in ballet and that's kind of seen as like European culture. Now I do salsa, again, not a lot of black women. And I, what I realize is that a lot of other cultures sort of hold their cultural identity and their cultural production very close to their chest. So even though there are other people who participate, you're a visitor mm. in their culture. And when it comes to culture that's produced from the African-American experience, it's it's up for grabs. So when we look at hip hop, when we look at jazz, and we look at R&B, when we look at funk at this point, you can see anybody of any complexion, of any ethnicity, of any place on the continent, um, in the world really, mm -hmm. participating in everything really besides gospel, and that's just because the church is still this very segregated place. So the question is, why is it that everyone else is allowed to participate and profit off of our culture, but we are not entitled to that same invitation? And I think- On the phone line with us right now, Aisha's in the house, Aisha Fane, Check out her at Women Love Power on Instagram. I love that address. Women Love Power. Check her out. And we're talking about men's potential, earning potential. And she says it's silly for women not to think that's important because it is. But I'm asking Aisha to j jump a little bit into what women are bringing to the table. Talk to me about that, Aisha. Well, you know what? I think the question, what are you bringing to the table, is flawed because if you ask me, Michael, I am the table. Women mm. are the table. We are the napkins. We are the plates. We are oh. the brain. Yes. And it's always been that way. If you go back to evolution and you say, why did the earliest men go into the dark jungle to take down beasts with rocks, pebbles, and their bare hands is only one reason they did it for access to women. So yeah. women very much are the table. It has always been that way. And I also think that sometimes in our society, we make this very juvenile mistake of saying, well, isn't it the same as exchanging money for sex? sex as yeah. if, you know, a woman who is being, you know, a gold digger is offering up her body. And in order to really believe that, you have to believe that the only thing a woman brings is what's between her legs. And you and I both know that that's not true. We Absolutely. offer a lot more than sex. We offer our emotional labor, our ability to pour into people, our ability to nurture seeds and dreams, not just babies. We turn houses into homes. We're offering our commitment and our loyalty and our wisdom. And not just that, it's 2017. We're also offering our own financial security and our own worldly success. Right. So we bring a lot to the table, and it's okay for us to have standards for the men that we choose to be with. And I knew that I loved speaking to people. I loved telling stories, but I did not love the newsroom. <laughs> And I had to figure that out. And so what I ended up doing eventually is creating Women Love Power, which is my platform. Um, I still write. I still speak. I still use all the skills that I wouldn't use if I was a journalist. But right now I'm helping women understand and tap into their power and wield that power in relationships and in the world. And I'm helping women 
discover the ways that things we do and what we believe really uh, compromise their power, you know, hookup culture, et cetera, et cetera. Forget people body shaming you, we're body shaming ourselves. And we're yeah. always trying to chase this ever changing, distorted ideal. And what happens what is we become shaming. disconnected from our bodies because we're always trying to take up less space. We look in the mirror, we go, I hate my arms, I hate my thighs, I hate my stomach. We have these very negative associations with our body. And beyond health, there are some other real ramifications of that. There are women that can't orgasm because they can't get out of their head. Part of that is because you are, you are so disconnected connected from your body being able to intuit when something is wrong and I think ironically the more that you are connected to your body and you embrace your body the more you take care of it what Nola has is three men who actually care for her who feed her in different ways so it's not about sexual liberation because there's a lot of if it's just about sex a whole bunch of women are Nola darlings on the yeah. world it's about choice Right, and it's yeah. we never really right. deal with choice and the fact that women really evolved to have choice. There was a time in our evolutionary history of where choosing the right man was a matter of life and death for a woman. We would not be here if women did not make smart choices about who they chose to sleep with and then potentially die for the better part of human history in childbirth. And I think a lot of our modern day conventions and the way that we teach women about dating about themselves are designed to deny women that choice. And so it's weird that we find perversion in Nola when really she's doing what women ought to do. The perversion is just that she flips the traditional gender role. Mm -hmm. That's a word. So we police ourselves, but not only that, there are countless stories of young black girls in charter schools mm -hmm. who have been sent home, yes. detention, yes. suspension, yeah. banned from prom, mm -hmm. you know, all these Man. things that go on their record, on their record mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. braids, for having a hair that's thicker than two inches, because yeah, that's thinking. the root for, you know, for, their, for being black. And that's the issue. Yeah. Oh we, it's a You're way that we are actually yeah. criminalizing blackness yeah. Yeah. through the hair. Mm -hmm. It's going to take hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years for there to be stability in many of these countries. In many of these countries, you do have independent gov governments that are committing some of the gravest human rights mm -hmm. atrocities on the planet right now because you have the haves and the have-nots. Whenever you have an instance of the have and have-nots, you're always going to have people vying for power. You're always going to have instability, and that's what you're seeing. That's why I think the only hope really is the private sector and even people from the diaspora who are living in Europe, living in America with money, coming back and investing in their homeland. Mm -hmm. And the truth about monogamy is Yes, yes, yes. And the truth about monogamy is monogamy is even made to benefit men. Right. The truth is polyandry. Why we keep getting <laughs> Let her finish. Polyandry. Let her finish. Polyandry uh -huh. and polygamy benefits women. Polyandry <clears throat> benefits Polyandry benefits women outside of the context of a patriarchy. Polygamy benefits women because it, then the Kobe Bryant's of the world get to have the multiple wives and concubines. So everybody, all the women get a man. The issue is broke men don't get women. So monogamy, the, the women, monogamy is the way that we can ensure that average Joes get to get married too. So the truth <laughs> is and the term woke, along with its concept and its cultural relevance, sort of takes a nap. That's until 2008, when a woman single-handedly, quietly, with little fanfare, surreptitiously, brings woke back to life. She gives birth to a new era of wokeness, and this happens on February 26, 2008. It is the same night, coincidentally, that uh, then-candidate Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton would be in Ohio debating health care. That songstress Erica Badu releases an album called New America. And for those of you that are familiar with Erica Badu's work, New America is a vast departure from the body of work that she has done prior. In this work, she leaves Tyrone alone. She says, you can stop calling Tyrone. Instead, New America is sort of a meditation on ideals and issues that would, unbeknownst to us on the cusp of this historic election, will become ever so relevant to American society and the world.